This is Quebec, a passionate province, to say the least. When it comes to federal elections, it's often Canada's wild card. I've been told mm -hmm. that there is this place uh, that's kind of like Canada's Boston, mm -hmm. Quebec. Mm -hmm. What's going on there? People compare it with, with Florida. Uh, you could compare it also with Ohio and, and other states that have, uh, you know, demographics that, that uh, uh, will, will, will really sometimes dramatically affect the outcome of a, a national, uh, a federal election. During election campaigns, leaders pay a lot of attention to this province. What can a Canadian do that a Quebecer cannot do? Why would you, would we need I think by definition, Canada, a Quebecer can do can anything do a Canadian can do because no a Quebecer less, is no a Canadian no and will remain a Canadian under my are. watch. We Quebec is the second largest province in Canada after Ontario in terms of population. A quarter of all Canadians live here, which is why Quebec has 78 of the 338 seats in the House of Commons. A big challenge for parties trying to win over Quebec voters is that they change their minds a lot compared to other provinces whose voting habits are generally consistent. Quebec is relatively unpredictable, particularly the Francophone population, which makes up nearly 80% of the province. While the portion of the Anglophone community in the Montreal area tend to vote liberal, and in Quebec City, they generally vote conservative. Most other ridings are in a tug of war between either the Conservatives and the Bloc Québécois or the Liberals and the NDP. When thinking about federal politics, a lot of Quebec voters will not necessarily only consider their viewpoints on the more traditional progressive versus conservative axis. Even though sovereignty is not such a big issue for a lot of Quebec voters, Quebec nationalism remains an important driver of the vote. You will have voters who can very easily shift on the spectrum from left to right without really thinking about the meaning of that shift in the same way that other voters will do in other provinces. Voter habits among Quebecers are heavily influenced by French media, which is evidently Quebec-centric. The way you are exposed to federal politics will be very different. Uh, and it, it also can does have a tendency sometimes to create a bit more of a hurt reaction to some some things that may be happening at the federal level that Quebecers will view as very, very important from their own perspective, but that may be, not be seen as something so critical outside of the province. Which explains why the province generally votes in dramatic waves. For nearly a century, it was strongly held by a red wave, considered a liberal stronghold, making it extremely challenging for the Conservatives to even form a minority government. That changed in 1984, when Brian Mulroney, with his ability to articulate effectively in French, won over Quebecers and managed to form two majority governments. But once the 1990s hit, so did what's known as the Bloc Wave, with the formation of Quebec's Sovereignty Party, the Bloc Québécois led by former Conservative Lucien Bouchard. There was a lot of discontent in Canada, and in Quebec in particular, over constitutional reform. There was the, uh, the failure of Lake Meach in 1990. Many people were angry with uh, the state of federal politics and there was the idea that a lot of people outside of Quebec had rejected the province by saying no to uh, constitutional reform to get Quebec to sign uh, the, the, an agreement. The party won 54 seats and for the first time a sovereigntist party became the official opposition in Ottawa. In 2011, it was the orange wave. The New Democratic Party seemingly came out of nowhere, sweeping the province. Jack Layton's appearance on Tout le monde en parle, an extremely popular weekly talk show in the province, is what many experts believe persuaded most Quebecers to vote orange. But a lot of people who voted for the NDP in 2011 were not necessarily people who had strong progressive views but people who were actually moving away from the bloc, trying to park their votes somewhere else, at the time not being satisfied with uh, the Conservatives, not being convinced by the Liberals, but they were looking for an alternative. But in 2015, the flood from the orange wave started to recede. Support dropped for the party when it lost more than 50 seats nationally and were replaced by the Liberals. And now the big question is how stable is this new Liberal base in Quebec? Is there a strong base or is it also uh, fluid, uh, which is what obviously opposition parties are hoping for? 
The only certain outcome we can expect this time around is what we've always expected from Quebec. The unexpected. Vive le Canada et Québec ensemble! He's uh, defending uh, our uh, position for, for the Quebec uh, at the government.